Welcome to St. Helena Ministries Daily Prayer with the Divine Office. Today is the Feast of St. James, Apostle. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the Rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him, the dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, They are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, They shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord, the King of Apostles. St. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother of, and brother of St. John the Apostle, were born at Bethsaida. He was present at most of the miracles performed by Christ and was put to death by Herod around the year 42. He is especially honored at Compostela in Spain where a famous church is dedicated to his name. Your hand, O Lord, has guided your church from age to age. The wondrous tale is written so clearly on each page. Our fathers praised your goodness and we their deeds record, and both to this bear witness, one church, one faith, one Lord. Your heralds brought glad tidings to greatest and to least. They told all men to hasten to share the great king's feast. And this was all their teaching, in every deed and word, to all alike proclaiming, one church, one faith, one Lord. Through many days of darkness, through many scenes of strife, the faithful few fought bravely to guard the Christian life. Their gospel of redemption, sin pardoned, man restored, was all in this enfolded, one church, one faith, one Lord. Your mercy will not fail us, nor leave your work undone. With all your strength to help us, the victory shall be won. And then by men and angels your name shall be adored, and this shall be their anthem, one church, one faith, one Lord. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, their words to the ends of the world. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span extends through all the earth, their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There he has placed a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent, rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun, to the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing nothing concealed from its burning heat. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, their words to the end of the world. They proclaimed what God has done for us. They grasped the meaning of his deeds. Hear my voice, O God, as I complain. Guard my life from dread of the foe. 
Hide me from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows to shoot at the innocent from ambush, shooting suddenly and recklessly. They scheme their evil course. They conspire to lay secret snares. They say, who will see us? Who can search out our crimes? He will search who searches the mind and knows the depths of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt them sudden wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin, and all who see them mock. Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's deeds. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. They proclaimed what God has done for us. They grasp the meaning of his deeds. God's holiness was revealed by them. All nations saw God's glory. The Lord is King. Let earth rejoice. The many coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice, and right. A fire prepares his path. It burns up his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed, those who boast of their worthless gods. All you spirits, worship him. Zion hears and is glad. The people of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God's holiness was revealed by them. All nations saw God's glory. They proclaimed the Lord's praises, told of his power to save, and of the wonders he had worked. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Men should regard us as servants of Christ and administrators of the mysteries of God. The first requirement of an administrator is that he prove trustworthy. It matters little to me whether you or any human court pass judgment on me. I do not even pass judgment on myself. Mind you, I have nothing on my conscience but that does not mean that I am declaring myself innocent. The Lord is the one to judge me, so stop passing judgment before the time of his return. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and manifest the intentions of hearts. At that time, everyone will receive his praise from God. Brothers, I have applied all this to myself and Apollos by way of example for your benefit. May you learn from us not to go beyond what is set down, so that none of you will grow self-important by reason of his association with one person rather than another. Who confers any distinction on you? Name something you have that you have not received. If then you have received it, why are you boasting as if it were you your own? At the moment you are completely satisfied. You have grown rich. You have launched upon your reign with no help from us. Would that you had really begun to reign, that we might be reigning with you. As I see it, God has put us apostles at the end of the line, like men doomed to die in the arena. We have become a spectacle to the universe, to angels and men alike. We are fools on Christ's account. Ha! Huh, but in Christ, you are wise. 
We are the weak ones, you the strong. They honor you while they sneer at us. Up to this very hour we go hungry and thirsty, poorly clad, roughly treated, wandering about homeless. We work hard at manual labor. When we are insulted, we respond with a blessing. Persecution comes our way. We bear it patiently. We are slandered, and we try conciliation. We have become the world's refuse, the scum of all. That is the present state of affairs. I am writing you in this way not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Granted, you have ten thousand guardians in Christ. You have only one Father. It was I who begot you in Christ Jesus through my preaching of the gospel. I beg you, then, be imitators of me. I no longer call you servants, but my friends, for I have shared every, with you everything I have heard from my Father. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been revealed to you. Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I have shared with you everything I have heard from my Father. A reading from a homily on Matthew by St. John Chrysostom, Bishop. The sons of Zebedee press Christ. Promise that one may sit at your right side and the other at your left. What does he do? He wants to show them that it is not a spiritual gift for which they are asking, and that if they knew what their request involved, they would never dare make it. So he says, You do not know what you are asking. That is, what a great and splendid thing it is, and how much beyond the reach even of the heavenly powers. Then he continues, Can you drink the cup which I must drink, and be baptized with the baptism which I must undergo? He is saying, You talk of sharing honors and rewards with me, but I must talk of struggle and toil. Now is not the time for rewards or the time for my glory to be revealed. Earthly life is the time for bloodshed, war, and danger. Consider how, by his manner of questioning, he exhorts and draws them. He does not say, Can you face being slaughtered? Can you shed your blood? How does he put his question? Can you drink the cup? Then he makes it attractive by adding, which I must drink, so that the prospect of sharing it with him may make them more eager. He also calls his suffering a baptism, to show that it will effect a great cleansing of the entire world. The disciples answer him, We can. Fervor makes them answer promptly, though they really do not know what they are asking, but still think they will receive what they ask for. How does Christ reply? You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with my baptism. He is really prophesying a great blessing for them, since he is telling them, You will be found worthy of martyrdom. You will suffer what I suffer, and end your life with a violent death, thus sharing all with me. But seats at my right and left side are not mine to give. They belong to those for whom the Father has prepared them. Thus, after lifting their minds to higher goals and preparing them to meet and overcome all that will make them desolate, he sets them straight on their request. Then the others became angry at the two brothers. See how imperfect they all are. The two who tried to get ahead of the other ten and the ten who were jealous of the two. But, as I said before, show them to me at a later date in their lives, and you will see that all these impulses and feelings have disappeared. Read how John, the very man who here asks for the first place, will always yield to Peter when it comes to preaching and performing miracles in the Acts of the Apostles. James, for his part, was not to live very much longer. For from the beginning, he was inspired by great fervor and, setting aside all purely human goals, rose to such splendid heights that he straight away suffered martyrdom. These men, while on earth, founded the Church of Christ with their own blood. 
they drank the cup of the Lord and became the friends of God. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, to their words to the ends of the world. They drank the cup of the Lord and became the friends of God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty Father, by the martyrdom of St. James, you blessed the work of the early church. May his profession of faith give us courage, and his prayers bring us strength. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Thank you for praying with me today. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday Rosary live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern every Sunday on our YouTube channel. Please also like, share, follow, and subscribe on whichever platforms you use. Pray for us and know of our continued prayers for you. Have a blessed day.